Onward or Pavlov? This is a question that crops up on a regular basis and the correct answer is to buy both but at $25 each it's not always possible. In this video I'm hopefully going to help you decide which game is right for you. So let's start with the active player base. There's not really much point in buying a multiplayer game if there's no one to play with. Luckily both games have a solid and active player base. Onwards as average over the past 30 days was 102, Pavlov's was 883. It's a big difference but this is from the Steam's data and Onward is also available on the Oculus Store. Pavlov isn't so Onward's numbers will be a little bit higher than that. Either way you'll be able to find a game whether it's with the PvP or the co-op stuff but we'll get back to that in a second. The next thing to consider is the time to kill. This is the amount of time it takes to kill someone and it can make a big difference to how people play the game. Using a pistol in Onward it takes me three shots to the chest to kill at short to medium range. Four if it's a little bit further away. This is all without armour. In Pavlov a similar pistol takes six shots to kill when they are not wearing armour. Using a submachine gun in Onward it takes two shots to the chest. You can see from this clip I can actually shred through these bots using single fire mode. In Pavlov it takes five to the chest without armour. If we move on to assault rifles we use the AUG. In Onward you can see that it's one shot kill to the chest even with a little bit of range. In Pavlov it's for using the same gun. Aiming for the head will significantly reduce this and it's far more important in Pavlov due to the amount of bullets it takes to kill if you're just shooting someone in the chest. The increased time to kill means that people have more time to react or get behind cover so people playing Pavlov tend to run and gun more and it ends up being a bit more fast paced whereas in Onward people tend to play a bit more cautiously, they use cover more, taking the time and making the gameplay a bit more slower and a bit more tactical. The gameplay also depends on the game mode you play, so let's take a look at those. I'm going to break them down into single player stuff, co-op and player versus player modes. We'll start with Onward again, you've got single player stuff, you've, you've got the shooting range where you can test out different guns, you've got a free roam mode with no enemies which lets you explore all the maps before you get slaughtered online, and then you've got operations which consists of hunt, this is basically terrorist hunt mode. Eliminate all the enemies on the map to win and then you've got evac which is where you try to survive unlimited waves of enemies of AI until the helicopter arrives so you can escape. Pavlov has its own shooting range which is actually much better as it allows you to freely pick up any weapon and then you can add an attachment on the fly without having to go backwards and forwards between menus. You can shoot at a target at different ranges or play a range of mini games. You also have kill house take out pop-up targets as fast as you can and compete against a global leaderboard. There's also a zombie mode where zombies come at you thick and fast. Each wave you survive gives you better and better weapons. You can also play the main multiplayer modes against bots. The bots are actually pretty poor but it's handy to get some practice in before jumping online although the hunt mode is actually quite fun in single player. Co-op modes for Onward use the same operations modes from the single player so you've got hunt and evac with up to four players. This is my favourite way to play Onward. I've had some great games with most players wanting to work together and communicate. It can get very tense as you can easily get shot although your teammates can revive you with a syringe. For Pavlov you have the zombies mode but you can play it online and play with custom maps. These include the original Call of Duty World War 2 zombie maps. More on this later. You also have the hunt mode which is mentioned before this is a wave based mode against bots with each wave seeing more and more difficult enemies to kill. For the player versus player stuff Onward has team modes like Uplink and Spec Ops. These are single life modes which means that once you're dead you've got to wait for the round to finish before you can play again. This forces people to play slower, be more tactical and makes things much more tense. Assault and Escort both allow respawns to, so tend to be a little bit faster paced. You've got some one man army modes which consist of the gun game which sees you get a new weapon every time you kill someone. The first player to actually get through all the weapons wins the round. You've got one in the chamber which sees you armed with a pistol with one bullet and a knife. One bullet will kill, if you kill someone you get another bullet, if you die you have to wait until the round is over before playing again. 
There's something there for everyone, but it's worth noting that you might not be able to join the game mode you want all the time, depending on when you play, but you can set up your own game and hopefully people will join. Pavlov's team modes include the Team Deathmatch and Search and Destroy, which is effectively Counter-Strike in VR. Pavlov also features Gun Game and a whole host of custom modes including Trouble in Terrorist Town and Prop Hunt. There is actually too much custom stuff for me to list in this video, but just like Onward, there is something for everybody, and because of the larger player base, you're far more likely to find the game type you want to actually play. The way you actually get the weapons in the game also differs. With Onward you've got like a loadout type system. So before you actually enter a game, you choose a class and then you get a certain amount of points to spend. You then use those points to choose the gear you want. Each item costs different points, so depending on the gun you choose, whether you want a sight, foregrip, which gadgets you want to take, you can't take everything so you have to pick and choose which items are more important for your playstyle or the game mode that you're actually playing. It's also worth noting you can only carry so much ammo and syringes. You can find supply boxes throughout the maps, but you need to be cautious when using your ammo. Again, this all influences the way people play, making Onward generally a bit more tactical and slower paced than Pavlov. Pavlov uses the same system as Counter-Strike, so when you spawn into the game, you can pull up a menu. You'll have a certain amount of money to spend as you play. The more kills you get, the more money you get. You can equip armor, upgrades for your guns like foregrips and silencers. It's all about getting you into the game as fast as possible and you have the option to switch up your weapons on the fly after each death or round. You also get unlimited ammo for all the guns, so spray and pray as much as you want. Obviously this isn't for all the game modes, as some force certain weapons like gun game. So let's talk weapons. Both games offer all the usual types with multiple pistols, shotguns, submachine guns, assault rifles, and sniper rifles. The key differences are with Onward being a bit more tactical and military based, you actually get things like night vision goggles, as each map has a night variant. You've also got things like a deployable drone, you can use this to scout ahead, and then you can communicate enemy positions back to your team. Your Pavlov has some less serious weapons like the double barrel shotgun, Uzis and the Desert Eagles. Both games offer a range of different sights and attachments like foregrips and silencers. The scopes are actually easier to use in Pavlov with a larger sweet spot. You really have to get the sight in the perfect place in Onward to be able to see through them and I personally find them quite difficult to use, especially when you're in the heat of a battle. Both games use a lot of the same weapons and comparing the way the guns feel, using a pistol one handed in Onward, you can see that the recoil sends the gun angle upwards if you fire rapidly. Using two hands, there is zero recoil. You can fire as fast as you want and the bullets will hit the target dead on. In Pavlov, firing a pistol single handed is much more accurate. The bullets won't hit spot on the target, but the accuracy is enough to be usable. If you two hand a pistol, it makes it more accurate, but not by much. If we switch over to a submachine gun now using the MP5, in Onward, one handed you can see that the gun recoils straight up making it pretty much unusable. If we use both hands, again, there is virtually no recoil allowing you to just hold the trigger and enter the magazine. In Pavlov, again one handed, the gun sprays, but it's a bit more wildly this time, not quite straight up. If you use both hands, it's much more controllable, but there's actually still some recoil, so you either have to fire in short bursts or try to control the recoil with the movements of your hands. You can't simply just hold the trigger like in Onward. Lastly, we're going to look at assault rifles using the AUG one handed. You can see that, again, recoils pretty much straight up. Using two hands, it's much more controllable. There is actually a little bit of movement with this gun, but it's not as much as the MP5. In Pavlov, the gun spray is much more wildly spread and it's pretty much unusable. With two hands, the foregrip on this gun really helps, but again, like the submachine gun, you still need to try and control the recoil. Which is better? I don't know, that's for you to decide, but both handle weapons and recoil differently. They both require manual reloads, you've got to eject the magazine, load a new one in and then rack the gun if necessary. So let's finish up talking about the maps. If you compare the base game content, Onward does have more maps to start with. Both of the games have maps which are built to a very high standard, but the big advantage that Pavlov has is the mod support. 
that means custom maps and custom modes. Onward actually does have custom map support now, but this has only just recently been added and Pavlov has had mod support for years. There are actually so many maps for Pavlov that I'm actually going to probably make a separate video covering the best ones. But some of the highlights include the Counter-Strike maps, Halo maps, you've got Call of Duty maps, you've got a Zelda inspired map, you've got some GoldenEye maps. If you play online most of your time will be spent in these custom maps. Most of your time in Onward will be spent in the base game maps, which are very good. Some of the early custom maps in Onward are actually good, but the majority of players are still playing the base game content. Whichever game you choose, you're going to have fun. Pavlov is more fast paced, and people compare it to Counter Strike, which is pretty much what it is if you play the Search and Destroy game with the Counter Strike maps. But it's actually much more than that. Onward is more slow paced, tactical, with people comparing it to armour. Some game modes like Gun Game change the way people play, but most of the time it's a bit slower paced and you're going to have to think a bit before you actually go out there and start shooting. Hopefully this video has been useful and informative for some people and has helped them decide which game is right for them.